Today we're going to talk about our Hunter brake lathe. It's a BL505 brake lathe. This is a really cool machine. The purpose of a brake lathe is to machine a brake rotor or a brake drum to a true surface. What determines if you need to machine a brake rotor or a brake drum is the brake rotor run out, the thickness, and the overall condition. We're going to talk about some of the pieces that we have. So this is our main piece. It's called an arbor. It rotates. We mount the rotor or the drum to, to enable to machine it. We have our cutting head. This is for brake rotors, and this is what we're going to learn today is brake rotors. On the back wall here, we have a bunch of pieces. These pieces we use to mount the rotor or the drum to the machine. So over here, we have clamp cups. We have different size clamp cups for different size brake rotors. We have cones. These cones fit in the middle of the brake rotor or the drum in order to put it in the middle of the arbor. We have spacers. Spacers take up the rest of the space that our arbor has. You need to use this spacer first. This spacer is called a self-centering spacer. What it does is it helps to reduce vibrations created during machining. These spacers you can use last to take up the rest of the space. In order to clamp it all together, we have a self-centering nut. The self-centering nut is left-handed threads. So righty-tighty, lefty-loosey does not apply to this application. It's a lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. We'll get to that later. We also have silencing bands. This is a silencing spring. Inside the spring there are rubber pieces to help absorb the vibration during machining, creating a better cut. We also have clip-on silencers that actually clip around the brake rotor as we machine it to help further reduce vibrations. We have a spring that I didn't mention before, but the spring sits in between our clamp cup and our cones to push against the brake rotor, ensuring that we center an arm armor. Okay, here we have a brake rotor. I've taken this rotor and I've painted it to give you more contrast to see what actually happens when we machine it. But in order to put this on the machine, we're going to have to use those adapters that were on top of the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of our cup cones, our clamp cups, we're going to put it on the arbor. Next thing I need to do is I need to take a spring. I'm going to take that spring and put it right against our clamp cup. Then I need to find a cone that fits inside of this rotor or this hubless rotor. When we take a cone, you need to make sure that the cone has protrusion on both sides so it fits in the hole and it also sticks out of the hole. We take one that is too small, obviously it's going to fit right through there, it's not going to do us any bit of good. So I take the cone and I put it on the arbor. Then I can take the rotor and put it on the arbor as well. Now that the rotor is on the arbor, I have to take another clamp cup and put it on the rotor. I have all of this space that I'm going to need to take up. So now I'm going to put those spacers that I talked about earlier on. Put our self-aligning spacer on first. This helps to absorb the vibration that we use during machining. And I can take the rest of the space up with the additional spacers. Okay. Now that we have our spacers on, we can take the nut and put it on our arbor. This nut has two sides to it. One side has a very deep recessed threads. This helps us enabling to get this nut on without the use of more spacers. When we put this nut on, we need to remember that it's left-handed threads. So it's lefty tidy, righty loosey. That's the deep recessed part. This is the other side with much shallower threads. When you put it on, you want to make sure that this is well centered in that cone. If you don't, it won't run parallel with the brake machine. You take our tool and snug it up. You don't need to push too hard on this. If you do, you won't get it off. That's about all you need to do. Now that the brake rotor is on, we're going to turn the machine on to make sure this is spinning true to the machine. If it's not, we're going to have to reassess how we've hooked this up. Turn it on. It looks pretty good, but to make sure we're going to have to do what we call a scratch cut. 
Before we start using a scratch cut, we need to put our silencing bands on. So we're gonna take our spring silencer, gonna dip it down in front of the cutting head, pull around the bottom of the brake rotor and stretch it over the top. Next, we have to align our cutting head up with the rotor. To do that, we have this nut to adjust. So we take our wrench, loosen it, and this now slides in and out. We want to set it right up. Once it's centered, tighten it back down. Make sure it's snug, you don't have to bear down on it. Now we're gonna turn the machine on and we're gonna do what we call a scratch cut. The scratch cut is going to tell us if we have the machine hooked up well enough and it's also going to tell us how many passes we might need to do on our machine. Turn the machine on. We're gonna take the crank and crank it into about the middle of the brake rotor surface. We're gonna take these adjustment knobs. Spin them clockwise until they just barely touch the brake rotor surface. We do the same to the other side. Now we're going to shut the machine off. We want to look at this cut that we've done with our scratch cut. We're going to look at where the cut starts and where the cut stops. If it's 50% of the brake rotor, then we can generally get away with one or two passes on the brake lathe. If it's three quarters, you can do a slow cut pass. If it's less than that, you're going to probably need to take more than one pass to machine the rotor true. We're going to take and move the machine back just a little bit. We're going to turn it back on and do another scratch cut. If the pattern is the same, then we know that the brake rotor is aligned correctly. Because we're going to loosen up our nut and spin the rotor. By doing that, Tells us if it's hooked on the arbor correctly, because if we get the same scratch pattern, then we know it's running parallel with our machine. If we get a different pattern, then we have to reassess how we've hooked it up. Machine back on. Turn it back off. And we can look at our scratch pattern. Like it starts in about the same spot, and it ends right in about the same spot as well. 